Hi guys, this is Tom, this is Watercolour Bites, and in this episode I'm going to be talking about watercolour brushes. Let's take a look. Okay guys, so this basically represents my brushes that I use for most of my paintings. As I've said in previous videos, actually you don't need a huge amount of brushes. There are some artists out there that just use one brush for all of their paintings. This particular brush, for example, is by a fantastic artist called Paul Weaver. It's his freestyle brush and he uses a lot of wet into wet work and this brush is fantastic um, because it holds a huge amount of water and pigment, so it's great for big washes and bigger paintings, but it also comes to an incredibly fine point, so you can actually do detailed work with it. I don't actually use this one a huge amount, I just wanted to show you that you can actually just get away with just one brush for all your watercolours. Before I go in depth into my brushes, I just want to very quickly touch on the material that they're made out of as well. For various reasons, I use exclusively synthetic brushes. There are a lot of companies now that are dealing with synthetic brushes or introducing a lot of synthetic brushes into their range because a lot of companies are thinking more about the ethical side of their products that they're producing and with a lot of questions around the natural hair trade it's becoming more of a thing that we're seeing more synthetic brushes. And one of the great things is that although natural hair brushes are fantastic brushes, they're beautiful to work with, sable ones in particular though can be incredibly expensive as can things like squirrel hair and goat hair. One of the beautiful things about the synthetic brushes is they are um, effectively much cheaper but they're fantastic quality and I think the synthetic fibres have come a huge way even in just recent years to the point where I own kind of, um, you know, like fake squirrel hair. You almost can't differentiate between the two. They're incredibly soft, they hold a lot of water and they're really lively. So um, that's just something I wanna point out. So basically, I'm gonna talk you through my basic brushes and then a few little extra strain ones that I do have which I occasionally use. I mentioned that you could use just one brush for all of your watercolour painting. I could very happily, for smaller paintings of say A3 or smaller, I could very easily use just this brush. Again, it holds a lot of water for bigger washes but it also comes to a fine point. One thing that I do find is that I could actually use very seriously only two brushes for the majority of my paintings and what I'll find is I basically have a bigger wash, for uh, a bigger brush for doing bigger washes and then I'll have a smaller round brush for doing my detail. So quite often I will tackle a whole painting either using one of these two and quite often um, this particular one. So that's one of my favourite kind of combinations of only two brushes. I'll put links to all my brushes in the descriptions. I'm in no way sponsored by any of these people, they're just brushes that I like. But let's have a let's have a closer look at exactly why I have them. And this is a mop brush, as I said, it's round. This is Escoda Ultimo. Um, it's a synthetic brush, but it's made to feel like squirrel hair, so it's incredibly soft. It's got this big bulbous body to the brush, just here but it also comes to a very fine point. Now this is a fantastic brush because it holds a huge amount of water um, and a huge amount of pigment, but it also comes to that fine point. So a mop brush is great if you want lots of water, great for bigger paintings, but also for doing large wet into wet washes on smaller paintings. And if you need a little bit more control, uh, you can hold it a bit lower down and use the very fine point. So that's the mop brush. So. Down from that, we have what's called almost just like a standard round brush. Um, you can vary in size, I'll talk about size at the end, but these are my two kind of mid-size round brushes. And they're very different in material, even though they're the same size. They're both size 16. It's a really nice kind of in-between size. As I said, you can do detail, but you can also do larger areas. What I have here is one called um, the Da Vinci Cosmo Top. Now this is a synthetic brush, but it's not made to emulate natural hair. It is just a synthetic brush. So it has a lot of spring to it. It's quite firm, but it also comes to a nice fine point. And that fine point, because it's a little bit more springy and a little bit more firm, is very controllable for small details. But it also has that larger body for doing larger washes. But note, compared to the mop, it doesn't have that big bulbous kind of belly to the brush, so it doesn't hold anywhere near as much pigment and water. And then exactly the same size, 
by uh, Princeton, their Neptune range. This is a size 16 round brush. It's made to be like squirrel hair, it's faux squirrel hair, and it's incredibly soft, really, really soft. So what's the point of having two brushes the same size? As I said, this one's very firm and springy, comes to a fine point, easily controlled for detail. This one does come to a fine point and can be good for detail because it's very soft, it's harder to do detail with, but also because it's very soft, it's great for laying down soft washes over the top of existing washes. It's less likely to disturb the pigment underneath. And as I said, both good for doing fairly large washes, but um, don't hold as much water as that. Then we come to my smaller round brushes, which I would tend to do finer work, smaller washes and smaller details. And there's a little selection here. So this is actually one that I only got very recently. It's a Raven brush, size zero by Jackson. It's actually, rather than a round brush, it's actually a mop brush, but a very small one. So it's a tiny version of this, basically. It's lovely because um, it holds loads of pigment and water like a mop brush does. It's got a really lively feel. It's lovely and soft, again, a bit like kind of sable or squirrel hair. And it also comes to an incredibly fine point. But because it holds a huge amount of pigment and it's very soft, it can be a little bit tricky to control when you're doing very small details. So that's when we might go to these brushes here, which are not a mop brush, they're back to our kind of round brushes like these. And what we have here again is I've got two brushes the same size, both a size 10 because it's a size that I like. I think it's quite versatile. You can do very fine areas, but there's a bit of size to it if you want to create slightly larger washes in that sort of size area. And again, we have a synthetic brush, which is very, very springy and very stiff. So that's better for the fine detail. But I also have a size 10 of the Princeton Neptune range, which is the faux squirrel hair, which is incredibly soft. So it's great for doing uh, softer washes. Uh, and washes over the top of other washes and working wet into wet. This doesn't hold anywhere near as much water and because it's not as soft, it's not as nice for creating small washes. And then I don't find I ever need to go any smaller than this. You can see I sat on this and snapped it in half, but it's one of my favorite handy little brushes. It's exactly the same as this Pro Art Synthetic, but it's a size eight. So it's just a, a size down from this size 10. Again, it's just there for like finer detail. It's synthetic, so it's nice and springy and easy to control. So that's basically it. Think about it like this. Um, we've got our big mop brushes are better for kind of wet into wet washes. They hold a lot of pigment, hold a lot of water, but can come to a fine point. That fine point can be hard to control because there's so much water and pigment in there. Our kind of medium sized brushes are our round brushes. As I said, both size 16, a nice versatile size, bit more control, bit nicer for doing soft wet into wet washes. And then down for more detail, our size kind of 10 and eight, both synthetic ones for a little bit more control. The faux squirrel hair one, softer for smaller washes um, and a little bit less control. But what can be really nice though, is to start with an essential kind of two or three brushes that get all your bases covered and then slowly build out from there. So I would like a, for example, bigger version of this mop brush, but I also want to invest in a smaller version of, these, of this mop brush to kind of fit in this size here. And I'd like to also play around with different materials. The point I'm making is start simple. Something for bigger washes and bigger paintings that comes to a nice fine point, either a mop or a big round, and then introduce maybe a brush that has a little bit more control for finer areas, and then you can kind of fill in the gaps and expand from there. The very last few brushes I wanted to talk about are a little bit more unusual ones. You don't see it a huge amount, but there's plenty of artists that use square brushes in watercolor. This is called the Skyflow System Free De La Rowney. It's actually for acrylic but it's lovely and soft and floppy, especially when it's got water in. Great for doing big washes. Um, great for kind of a, just a slightly different mark. This is a very similar, very cheap brush by De La Rowney. Again, for acrylic, but it holds a lot of water. Great for watercolor. Um, again, just a smaller acrylic brush that I sometimes use just to create a different mark, create a bit of variety. And then very finally, I don't use a rigger brush, but you will see riggers used, very fine lines, good for dry brush work. Uh, I forgot to say that these stiffer synthetic brushes can be really great for dry brush work because the soft ones, they tend to stick a little bit more, whereas the springier, stiffer ones 
can be um, a bit more responsive for dry brush work. Dry brush work being when you're using quite saturated paint. Very finely, I was just given this, but I actually really love it and I'll explain why. It's a bit of a secret weapon in my arsenal of brushes. Um, it's a large sword liner. And as it sounds, when it's wet, you might not be able to see it, but this line here, the edge, comes to an incredibly fine point and it almost works like a rigger that you can do incredibly fine marks with this, masts on boats and things like that. But what it also does really well, because it's quite long, when it's got water and pigment in it, it's really floppy and you can really kind of fling it around and the paint kind of flies about everywhere. You get kind of fine marks in amongst that. Use it with slightly stiffer paint, a bit scruffier and it's great for foliage. Um, so it's just a really versatile brush. It's a bit of a strange one, but I really like having it. And then very finally, one brush I forgot to mention, which I'm going to get now, is this brush here. It's basically, again, a Jackson Studio Synthetic. It could be any brush, but it's just basically a knackered old brush. You can see, like, it doesn't come to a fine point at all. It's completely ruined. However, when you want to do dry brushwork for, say, some foliage or to create a bit of texture, actually, this is one of the best brushes for that, you don't have to go and buy a fancy brush, just, just find a knackered old, well-used brush like this and it will do really great things. So that's it guys, that's all my brushes. So aside from the kind of more unusual and square brushes, really what we're looking at are round brushes of various sizes and various softnesses that do different things. And we then have our mop brushes, which hold a lot of water and a lot of pigment and are especially good for doing those big washes at the start. The final point that I want to make is that there is no single right brush for a right situation. It's all about what you like, what you prefer. Start with something simple and experiment and build out from there. There we go guys, I hope you enjoyed that, I hope you find it useful. And as I said, that was not a completely exclusive or comprehensive or extensive list of brushes. It was just an example of the brushes I use, the different types and why, and hopefully that will help you when deciding what brushes you need, what brushes you want to use. Don't forget you can find me over on Patreon where I've got loads of other exclusive content, all of the links down below. You can find me on Instagram at Tom Shepherd Artist. And please do consider subscribing if you enjoyed this video. There's going to be loads more to come. I've been a little bit quiet recently on YouTube because we've just moved house and it's been Christmas and it's been New Year, but I've got a massive list of videos to come. Um, have you got any questions about the brushes or would you just like to let me know what your favourite brushes that you can't live without are? Let me know in the comments down below. All links in the description. And until next time, happy living, happy painting and I shall catch you soon.